Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana and I am an acrylic artist. Thanks for stopping by. I am very excited to show you what we're painting today. Let's take a look at it. I have titled this one The Maid of Honor. I really wanted to work on uh, skin tones and the shadows on skin tones and the profile of a face and hair with a little bit different movement and um, this one was a lot of fun. I always think that uh, paintings like this I'm going to struggle with and um, once I sit down and start painting it just flows and I really enjoy the process. Now there are a lot of things you can do to change this one up. You can change the skin tones, you can change the color of the hair, you can change the color of the flowers and just really have fun with it. I think you're going to enjoy this one. I really hope you're going to enjoy this one and I hope you pick up your paintbrush and paint along with me. So let's grab our paintbrushes and let's get started. All right, I have applied two coats of white. Now I've just applied a third coat on here to get it still wet and I'm going to lightly mist that while it's still damp and then we're going to apply some some uh, fluid acrylics I couldn't even think what I was painting with some deco art fluid acrylics I'm just going to streak this through that white straight up and down motion here and I'm using cerulean blue and cobalt teal hue and just make a streaky background. This will be light and so pretty. But you want to do wet on wet, so do this while it's wet. You don't need very much paint here. But I wanted a mostly blue background for this project. I want to make the side a little bit darker in a few places. This is the cobalt teal hue right through here and mostly on this edge and then the cerulean blue is mostly in the middle. So just a straight up and down streaking with this. We're going to let this dry and this is going to be our background for our next lady. So when it gets dry, we'll come back and get started. Okay, my back is dry. I have my pattern on here. Now I did apply a coat of multi-purpose sealer first before I applied my white paint um, with my two inch foam roller. I applied three coats of white paint. On the third coat, we did the streaking of, of the blues. Now these are the blues that I used in the background, the media fluid acrylics. I used cerulean blue and cobalt teal hue. If you do not have these paints, but you have acrylic paints, you can use bright blue and turquoise blue. Okay, so that is an option. I highly recommend you investing in some of these paints because they're highly pigmented and they make great glazes and washes to brighten up colors and it takes such a small amount of that paint. That paint for even though the bottles are small, you use such a small amount of paint, this paint will last you forever. Okay, let's start laying in some of our underpainting here. And we're going to start with some flesh colors here. So we're going to mix some colors. <clears throat> I'm not really sure what colors I'm going to need here. I'm going to start with Natural Buff. And I'm just going to put some of these colors out on my palette and then figure out what quantities I want to use. I'm also going to put some flesh tone. Actually it's warm beige now. I still have the old bottle. But I want her skin tone to lean more, a little bit more towards the orange side. So I'm also going to put, and I'm not sure this color will work at all, but I'm going to put some melon out. Just a little bit of that. And I'll also put some honey brown out. 
You don't want this to get overly dark and I've got a little bit of white on my palette left over from my background. So here we are. Natural Buff, Warm Beige, uh, Melon, and Honey Brown, and then our white left over from, if it's not dried out, I sprayed it with some water, but it may already be, that's got a chunky yucky in it. It may already be drying out too much to use, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I'm going to take my, um, my base color is going to be my natural buff. That's going to be the color I'm going to start with. Okay, I want to add some honey brown. So just a tiny little bit in there. That's probably five to one, five natural buff to one honey brown. And I want to add some melon in there. And we're going to mix this and see what we get. Now you want to mix up enough to do two coats on her. I think I want just a touch more of both the honey brown and the melon. And then I think we'll add a little bit of white in here because when this dries it will dry a little bit darker. And that melon made it really pink so add more honey brown. I haven't added any of the warm beige yet. And I may not add any to it. I'm going to grab white now. So I want you to just mix a color that appeals to you for a flesh tone. Just remember, after you apply your first coat, if it is too dark, see to me that looks super crazy dark. Um, I'm going to add more white in here. If I can get it open, goodness gracious. in here to lighten this. We want this nice light peachy orangey flesh tone. So I'm going to start with this mix and see how it does for me. It might be way too dark by the time I get done here. I might not like it at all. I might want to lighten that up quite a bit. All right, let me grab a, I'm going to grab my angle brush to base coat this in. And we're going to base coat in all of the skin areas. Now, um, I'm just going to go right up into the hair here. I don't care about that. This The blue underneath is going to change the color of this for our first layer. Um, and I can already tell this is, this is an orangey color that I like, but it's a little bit darker than what I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this first coat and then add some color in for the second coat. This will be a good undercoating. But uh, the blue is definitely going to make it look darker, so add a little bit of water to your paint so you can move it nicely. Have nice smooth paint going on here. Nothing thick and globby. Here to her face and go right into the hair because we're going to be um, covering up the side of her face here with hair, but we don't want a definite line there, so be sure and go ahead and do the lips, and the nose, everything gets this color. That's a fleshy area. 
just bring it right up into the hairline. Okay, oh, let me wide angle out just a little bit. You can see all over. So we've got a first layer on here. I'm going to get this dry. I'm going to come back and probably add the rest of that natural buff in there just to lighten it up just a little bit. And uh, I think that should make a nice color. So let's get it dry. Okay, mine's dry. So I'm going to go in and, and add the remainder of this natural buff in here and lighten it up a little bit. I still want it to be a little more peachy. So a tiny little bit of melon. So just adjust your color to a color that you like. Remembering that as it dries, it is going to dry darker. All right. Let's try this and see how it's going to look. And if you got your blue pretty dark in the background, you may need to come in and apply a, um, a third coat on here. I just picked up a little tiny bit of white and mixed that in there. I still felt like it needed to be just a little bit of a brighter skin tone. Right through here, you don't have to worry too much about being perfect there. We're going to be covering that up with hair. But we do want the, uh, the face and the neck to be pretty good here. And if you don't paint over all of your um, graphite lines, you can come back and erase those. I think I pretty much got paint on all of mine, so I'm going to make sure I cover them up. color pretty well. Alright, just a, another quick smooth coat. Something in my paint there. Okay, let's go ahead and undercoat her hair. Now, I did not use the warm beige, so that will not be in my palette list unless I decide to shade her flesh with that color. So, let's start with her hair, and I'm going to shake this up because I have not used this color of paint in a long time. Now if you need to let this dry and come back in and add your your hairline over here where it goes you can do that because obviously her hairline does not go way back here so do not be starting it way back there. We're going to use bittersweet chocolate. I do not have a ton of that color, so hopefully I have enough to do this project. We're going to start out with a really dark color underneath. We'll put this color on a couple of times. Alright, so um, her hair comes across her face like this. So I'm going to just work it on to her that area where we brought the skin behind. Okay, then down here it's coming onto her neck. So we'll just work some in there. And this is just a loose little filling in. Getting the shape of everything. 
We are not putting the flowers in until later, so do not get stressed out about those flowers. And this comes down here. And we'll have some stray hairs coming off of that, but for now we're going to leave it about right there. Got a little bit of water in my brush here. And then she's got a part in her hair. And we don't have to really worry too much about the shape of it right now. We just want the shape of the head, mostly. So that's just a quick layering in of bittersweet chocolate. And I'm going to let that dry, and we will come back and add another layer in here. And I may want to bring more hair this direction. I'm going to let it dry and lay my pattern on there and see if I need to bring that over a little bit more onto her face. I feel like I have too much of her face showing right here. So I'm going to get it dry, put my pattern on, and we're going to apply a second coat. I will come back uh, after I put my pattern on there if I have to adjust my lines and show you. So um, pattern on if you need it. If not, get those base coats on. I think while we're letting her hair dry. We'll go ahead and get our straps base coated in. They're going to end up being a white color, maybe a cream. I haven't really decided, but I want to undercoat them with some gray sky. So just put a little bit of that out on your palette and go ahead and uh, do a quick coat on your straps here of gray sky. And then after we get the second coat on our hair, we'll put a second coat of gray sky down here and we'll have everything base coated then to be ready to begin adding some detail onto this. So gray sky. Couple of coats. So if I don't go all the way out to my skin, then I want to be sure and come back with my flesh tone and fill in so that there's no blue showing through between the skin and the strap. So make sure you're just covering all of that up. All right. Okay, so I see I am way off on my hairline here. So I'm going to go ahead and base coat that in real quick. So it can be trying to work with the other. And then down here I need a little bit more coming this way onto her neck. So put your pattern line on. Now since I've come in and added some more in there, I'm going to come in now and add some stray hairs coming going ahead and coming off. So I kind of indicated some going on here. Now I can use this brush and stay up on the chisel edge or I can go over to a round brush. This is not a very big one so let's see if I can do what I want to do here. We're going to have a stray one here. I'm not going to worry too awful much about the detail of these because we've got shading and stuff but quite a few of them come off back here and uh, it's a very very messy hairdo lots of hairs coming off and swirling around and just being loose and so do this with a round brush step on the tip Try and keep some fine hairs going here. And I'm going to put a few out here. We'll, we'll come and add some different color on these. So I'm not going to stress out too much about their detail right now because we will definitely be defining these much later. Go ahead and get my second coat on her hair. I think I 
I definitely need to get a new bottle of this bittersweet chocolate here. It's not worry too much Ooh, goobers, about the shape of things just yet you know as far as details go that hair is going to go all the way around her head but for now I'm just going to leave it right there I'm going to put a quick set coat on my gray, second coat on my gray here. We are going to get it dry and then we are going to be ready for some details. I know all this undercoating stuff, this base coating is the stuff we hate to do the most. But it's important to do it well because it's the foundation for your whole painting. So give just as much care with your base coats as you do with everything else because it's the part that your painting stands on. Okay, time to get it dry. Okay, let's start working on her skin and um, if you need to transfer on some fine detail lines, go ahead and do that. I don't think you can see it, but I used a graphite pencil that is pink to kind of detail where her line, her eye will be and her cheekbone is and some wrinkles in her neck. Okay, and I just did that with, um, oh here it is. Uh, one of my favorite chalk pencils because it comes with green, pink, and white lead and I keep one of each loaded with each color and I use the pink one on this and I like it because it disappears with water or paint. Okay, let's start uh, adding some shading on here. So I didn't use this natural buff earlier and maybe I want to use it and maybe not. We might just um, see about mixing our base coat with some honey brown for a shading color and a tiny little bit of the pink, the melon. So it's just a soft mix here, I would say two or maybe three of our skin tone mixed to one to one. So let's try it that way. One, two, three, one. Try to get the brown without all that other color. One. And that's a little, little dark right there. It's a little pinky. So kind of cut back on the pink. If it, if it gets too, um, too dark, just mix a little bit more of your um, base color in. Now, this looks more pink than that. That looks more brown. So maybe just, it's really a tough, you know, just kind of go back and forth until you find a color that you really like for a shading color. We don't want it to be super dark. And we don't want to have a lot of this in our brush, so I'm going to wash my brush out and load some of this mix right here, a side load for a float and see how we're going to like this. Make sure it's not going to be too dark. We'll start over here on our straps and that's going to be highlighted up there, so we're not going to go all the way to the top. And we'll bring this down just a little bit. I think I want just a touch more pink in there. I want it to be a little bit more on the pink side. 
Okay. I'm just going to wipe that off because I just shoved it all over there to the side. Alright, so our base color, some melon, and a little bit of honey brown, and some white in there if you need it. I am just going to brush mix, but um, if you feel more comfortable um, mixing a good amount of this, then go right ahead. I want to make it a little bit more on the pink side. I like that much better. I'm going to go next to the strap. I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to get a big brush here with some water. Dampen that. And take my paper towel and just erase that. And come in with my white eraser and finish off any that didn't come off of there. Okay. My paint wasn't even completely dried there yet, so it came off very easily. Okay, this leans a little bit more towards the pink side, but like I said, based on whatever skin tone you made will determine your color. And this is mostly going to be this color over here on this arm. A little bit of highlight on the top there. We can create a little bit of a shoulder blade. Bring it down a little bit. Just by making a little float. A little triangle float there to create a little bit of a shoulder blade. And then we can come down with some of this down the center for the back. Creating some highs and lows in here now. Okay, I'm going to mix some more. So our base color, some of that peach color, a little tiny bit of honey brown. A little bit more pink. And we're going to go up here underneath our hair. I'm just going to go right on the hair. We're going to be putting so many layers on this hair. It will not matter that we're painting over it right now. but. If it bothers you, come back with your base coat, put some of that in. Now, her neck is turned here, so she's got a really prominent um, fold here. I'm mixing a little bit more here. This might be slightly darker, than, and she's got another little fold right underneath it. A couple of little, just tuck some folds, you know, some lines in there. Don't, don't stress out about this. This is all going to come together beautifully. Go around her face here, along her hairline. And I'm going to put some of this back here, kind of coming down her back a little bit. Alright, let's put some up here on. Her eye is going to go there, but her nose will definitely be shaded out here. And just above her lip, just a little bit. And her chin will have some darker color on it. To right about there, because that part's going to be highlighted. And this is all kind of shadowy back through here. So just whatever's left in your brush, just kind of pity pat blend that in there. I want some, some darker shading right through here. And we'll probably come back and repeat this because there are a few places that need to be darker. And then on the opposite sides of her straps, we need to do a shading as well.
Okay, I'm gonna flip this around so I can do this side. And it looks like it needs a tiny bit more pink in it. And we'll do along this side of the strap. And I think I will also do along the bottom down here. This is all just that mix. Our base color, a little bit of melon, tiny bit of honey brown. Keeping it more on the pink side, so don't put too much honey brown in there. I also need some of this color... front of her neck here. Right here is going to be darker. And we'll just pity pat some of that down a little bit more on this outside edge of the arm. So our highlights are going to be right in here. Um, we will have a little bit of this color up here on her forehead. She's going to have some highlight mostly up a little bit higher. But we're going to come back and, and darken some of this because some of it's not quite as dark as I want. But we are getting a nice uh, build onto this. Let's darken some of our shading. I went ahead and just mixed me up a little bit of this um, color. and. Um, I might add a tiny bit more pink in there to it so that I could move a little bit more quickly here. So just go over your second, your areas that you did previously. Make sure you're keeping these nice and soft. Now right there I want it to be a little bit darker so I'm going to grab a little bit more honey brown in my mix here because this area needs to be darker. It still needs to be darker than that so a little bit more honey brown. This is a really dark area there. brown on my toe of my brush there. Take that off. Grab a little bit of that mix I made and just blend that out. I'm going right over the hair here. I'm not going to go over those shoulder blade areas again. I'm going to lighten those up just a tiny bit. And this is all pretty dark back through here. Okay. Just letting what little bit is on my brush just kind of finish off that shading on there. mix that we made and start adding a little bit of a nostril out here. Maybe just a tiny bit more honey brown in that mix. Okay, 
really see it at the moment. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this color on her bottom lip. And then her top lip comes out here. Kind of like that. Oh goodness gracious. Let me just remove that because it's it's making me crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. We'll come back and touch that up as we need to. I'm gonna start with her her eye up here and do a little bit of color above her eyelid. A little bit of shadow color. This is some thinned honey brown. And then I'm going to start with um, her eyebrow here. We'll make some thinned bittersweet chocolate. Now, go to a detail liner brush if you need to do this with a detail liner brush. Just some little fine hairs. Right here. And then we're just going to kind of bring them back. Don't make these very big or very dark. Keep it... kind of thin and soft and small. We'll go ahead and start her eye here. Um, she's got some little eyelashes down here and some bigger ones here that will be coming off. But we've got a little highlighting to do on that edge. And actually her eyelashes come out like this. Direction. They'll be a little bit longer than that, but it's just the beginning, so don't um, get a little bit of that honey brown wash or not. And put it in here where the eye is. You can kind of get to know where we're going here. We won't really be seeing the eye eye part of it. We're just seeing the the corner of her eye and her eyelashes. So all of that will be <clears throat> detailed in later. We're just laying in some foundation here of where we're going to be going. Okay. So um, I want to add a little bit of highlight on here and I'm going to take our flesh base mix and add some white to it to get a lighter color. So I'm going to start out with two of our flesh mix plus one white and we'll start adding a little bit of highlight on here.
I'll probably bring some of my flesh color in and blend that back out a little bit. Just pity pat some highlights in here on her back. Don't be too worried about it right now. We're going to come back and define that a little bit more on her chin here. We want some definition. And then we really need to define her cheek. So her cheek comes out here and then it curves back right here right before it gets to the lip. A little bit of highlight up here. A little on her nose out here. And we'll have just a little bit here. I'm going to take my base color, my flesh base color, and I want to pity pat a little bit of this over those shoulder blade things that I got on there. Just put a little bit here and there. Take some of this down just a scooch. I still want this area to be darker, so I'm going to darken that up just a little bit, and then we're going to give some um, color to her. This has too much of a line there, dividing them. So I'm just going to blend in some of our flesh, original flesh mix. Kind of break up that line a little bit. I just have a little bit on my brush, just pity pat. Kind of gently blend it. This is how you can learn to blend your colors a little bit. I'm going to go straight into honey brown here and work that into my brush and we're going to darken right here. Darken a little bit on the end of her nose there. Some, some rosy color on her cheeks here in a minute. Okay, I think she's starting to look, take shape pretty good. We're going to brighten her highlights here in a minute, but I want to add some rosiness on her cheeks first. Okay, let's put a little bit of color on her cheeks here. We're not going to do a ton, but we do want it to be a little more rosy here. So I'm going to get a dry paper towel, and we are going to load some melon onto our brush. And It's a dry brush, and we're going to rub it off. Now we're going to very gently begin rubbing this onto her cheek. This is the lower, this is the shaded part of her cheek anyway. And we want to start adding some color in here. And you can start giving more pressure as you can tell how much paint is on your brush and how much it's leaving off. Um, but right through here, let's add some of this. Let's just kiss a little bit up here. any left in my brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this. It's not dry. I'm trying to add a little bit more in here. You can do this as many times as you need to, but do not get it 
excessively bright. We can kiss a little bit of this in some other places if we want to. I need to shade this down here more, but I mostly want to keep it right here. And let it kind of just fade away. If it gets too dark, go pick up some of your flesh color and work some of that flesh color in there to that cheek area. I'm going to leave mine right there for now. I'm not going to wash my brush out because I might need it later. So in that case, I can clean it with some hand sanitizer or some rubbing alcohol and get it um, nice and clean. So I'm going to sh darken this right here. I'm going to grab some honey brown. You can add a little bit of bittersweet chocolate to it. I mean, it would be just a fine, minute amount. Maybe just a tiny bit more of bittersweet chocolate because this wrinkle here really needs to be defined more. I mean, you want to use such a small amount of that bittersweet chocolate or you're going to, everything's going to be just turning black. Unless you're going for that kind of tone in there. And um, right to here. Another wrinkle line that's a little more distinctive. I don't want it to look like her neck is like cut in half there. Let me clean up where I got that line here with my white eraser. here. And a little bit through here. This is that honey brown with just a teeny tiny little bit of bittersweet chocolate. I mean it is the smallest amounts of stuff ever. flesh color with a little bit of white which was our first highlight and trying to bring this highlight up this way make it look like her neck is turned a little bit there I think that will help I can already see here on her cheek, I'm going to pick up a little bit more white on my brush here, that her cheek needs to be more rounded, like that. I'm going to get the shape of it here, and then I'm going to come back in and add probably some of my flesh, more of my flesh color in there. Okay, I can 
can see my my line there where I had my first layer and I'm not really liking that. white angle out because white angling out really helps. I think once we get her eye done in there it's going to really help that. So um, that's just a tiny bit darker than what I want so I'm going to just take my straight flesh color and go over that and hopefully that should tone that down just a little bit. And we'll let that dry and see how that looks. But I think it's coming along nicely. And I'm still not happy with her cheek here. It needs to be puffed out there, but more straight here. So let's fix it. Let's erase that off of there. Our paint hasn't cured, so as long as it hasn't cured, we can still erase that top layer. here. Erase that a little bit more so I can kind of see where I'm going here. Our flesh mix and some white. really pronounced out here. And it flattens more here by the eye. Well, that cheek's just going to be a huge struggle for me, it looks like. So I might have to leave it for a minute and then come back to it. Because I think I'm not going to be getting too happy with it. I'm really hoping that when I... I'm hoping, but if not, I'm just going to come back with my flesh color and paint it back in and work it all over again. All right, so let's work on the eye, I think. So we've added a little bit more highlight on here, but I do, I, I do want to highlight more, but I think I want to go ahead and get the eye on there before I do that. So let's get a fine detail liner brush, a couple. We're going to work on the eyelash and the eyebrow. And we're going to start with some, um, well, we're only going to use our uh, bittersweet chocolate. Goodness gracious, I couldn't even think of what I was using. Bittersweet chocolate. So I've got two brushes here. One is a very short bristled brush and one is a very long bristled brush. So I'm going to start with, oh, I've got some water on my ferrule there. Let's get that off. Do not want water on your ferrule. 
That will roll down and you'll be so, so not happy. Oh, that's a long eyebrow hair there. I don't want it that long. Ginormous. Alright, this is the really short bristled brush here. And I'm just adding in another layer from what we had before. I'm still not doing a ton here. Try to shape that out a little bit better. Okay, that's good enough for that. And then her eyelashes, her eye comes across this way. And her eyelashes go out this way. And that's just a jumbled mess there. I'll try and define those a little bit more. And then it's dark right here in the corner, and then there's a few that come out this way. I don't think I did the best work with that tiny little brush there. I'm going to grab a little bit of honey brown in here so I can have some lighter hairs to help me get some definition. I made those eyelashes way too long. I really want it dark right here in the crease. I'm going to put a little wash of some honey brown above her eye here. I think her eyelashes need to be defined quite a bit more than that. So I might come back with a little bit lighter color here in a minute, but I need to let that layer dry. Let's um, add a little bit more color to her nostril by taking that honey brown and a tiny bit of bittersweet. And it's just a teardrop shape, so don't, don't let it get too dark and too big. Just a, a small little teardrop shape in there. And then I'll just highlight above it just a little bit. Out here. That was just a tiny little highlight of our flesh base mix and our um, white. Shade a little bit on the bottom of the nose. Little bit right here below the nose. It's got a little bit of a shadow right there. Let's take some melon. I might have to get a brighter color, but we'll see if this will work. And add this to the lip. A 
let's make a ginormous lip. Needs to be because her. Making a mess of her lip. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. So I'm just using the melon, a tiny bit of bittersweet to darken it at, at the back of it. I mean, I have minute amounts of paint here. So I want it dark back here and a little bit on the top edge of the lip. my flesh mix underneath it and smooth it out. So her lip is just going to be a, a little puttering. Try not to overwork it, which is very easy to do. Where we would normally think it would be lighter on the top edge is going to be darker and it's going to be lighter on the bottom edge. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just taking some of that melon and a tiny bit of bittersweet chocolate to darken it. Really blend it into your brush nice, nicely. I'm going to take a little bit of the, the melon back on there, kind of pink up the lip just a little bit. And I covered up my highlight, so I'm going to go back with my highlight, which is white and a little bit of that pink. let this dry because I keep removing my shading color every time I go touch up my other colors so I'm gonna put my shading color on here I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and add my pink let it dry come back and add my white on there because it is not working out so well
Okay, I had to come back in with some razzleberry on the lips because that melon was just not dark enough. So the razzleberry is on there, a little highlight on the bottom with the melon and white mix, or just straight white. And then mix a little bit of bittersweet chocolate with the razzleberry for a little shading right there on the crease and the top of the lip. And we can come back and darken that later. And then uh, I think I had my eyelashes on camera. They were just bittersweet chocolate. I came back with a little bit of bittersweet and white. And added just a couple little strokes of a highlight on top of the eyelashes. And we can brighten that later. We want to get our brightest highlight on our skin now, which is going to be um, Snow White. And work this into your brush so it's a nice light color. We don't want um, bold, bright Snow White on everything. We're just going to add some some brighter little highlights on here a little bit on the chin kind of work that out a little bit up here on the cheek on the nose just a little bit above the lip I know it's upside down but right here above the lip we're gonna have a little tiny bit of highlight up here and then up on the forehead here and above the brow oops that's a lot of white we need a little bit of a highlight above the brow there a little bit more out here on the nose we'll put a little bit right here on the neck in that area where it's it's creased tiny bit over here on this shoulder we won't see a whole lot of that and then I'm just going to pit pat what's left around in the light areas on the back you don't have use the water edge and blend it out this is just a, a little bit of a highlight don't don't let it get overpowering here we can always come back and adjust as we need to but right now, we're going to keep it just at that. Um, I'm going to take some of my flesh tone and make a little bit of a wash of it and kind of smooth out her back a little bit here. I feel like it's a little blotchy. I want to smooth it out. much there okay I, I had ser seriously hardly any paint in my brush there so you know if you need to come back and adjust any of those shadings which I might I think the, the one down her back I really want that to be a little bit um, darker this one here brown here yeah that definitely needed a little bit and that shoulder blade probably could be over a little bit farther. give it a tiny bit of a highlight on the other side of it. We won't be seeing a lot of the highlight over here, but it will kind of help to find that shoulder blade just a little bit. I 
and it definitely needs to be scooted over that way. Make it not quite so prominent. Okay, I think that is going to finish up her skin and her face and everything. So we are ready to move on to... Uh, I think I'm going to get a base coat on the straps because the straps are going to have some detail to them and we're going to start working on the hair. All right, she's looking pretty good. So let's add um, some color onto her straps here and then we're going to go work on her hair. I'm adding some light buttermilk on here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we could have painted them in with light buttermilk instead of the gray. I was initially going to paint them white but decided I would change it and her dress could be whatever color that you would like it to be so if you want her dress to be a different color you just paint her straps a different color so I'm going to go right over this strand of hair right here Here does not look very straight. So that's just a quick coat of light buttermilk and we're going to let that dry. <clears throat> I'm going to quickly put some of those strands of hair back on. Some of our bittersweet chocolate and now we're going to start adding some hair. for my small round brush <coughs> excuse me so let's just come back and add a few of these back on top and add a little bit of water to your paint so you can Thin it down. You can always come in and put these on after you have painted all of her skin in, so don't feel like you have to put them on before. Okay. So we've got some nice uh, stuff going on here. And I'm going to bring a little bit more of the hair over this way. So let's start adding some layers of color onto our hair. We'll come back and add another coat on our straps here in a little bit. But I want to start adding some layers onto her hair. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to get a little bit bigger round brush, I think, and pick out some colors that I want us to use. So I'm going to go to a four round, and I'm going to start with dark chocolate on here. We're going to build a couple of layers on our hair, and then we're going to come back and add um, the flowers in and then finish out her hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. I need to get some water. All right, so I'm just going to load a round brush with some of this um, milk. What am I doing? Dark chocolate. I'm using dark chocolate. I have bittersweet chocolate first, then the dark chocolate. Then, yeah, now, now we're doing the dark chocolate. Good grief. I'll get this out. She's got a little bit of a part up here in her hair. So I'm just going to indicate that with a little line. Not that we can see it a whole lot. And we're just going to start stroking in some hair. Now, you can't see a ton of it here 
yet but as we build our layers we're going to be able to see more and more in her hair okay Don't keep it super, I mean, you, you want it to be confined a little bit back here, but you still want it to flow like hair, so, you know. Coming right down to this area right here, that's where we're going to add our roses, and then all this is going to be messy, like a messy bun type of thing out here. And then <clears throat> on the top, see it's already fading back down in there so it's getting hard to see it, but my part is like right through here. And I want to add some, some strokes kind of coming over this way and then building towards the back as we go back this way. So you're seeing a little bit of layering. You'll probably be able to see it more as you paint it than maybe you can on my camera shot here. But <clears throat> we're just going to follow the shape that we already created here of her hair. Okay, and now down here, this is where you can um, create how her hair goes. So loops here, loops there. It's just going to be a little bit of a messy bun. So our hair is going to be coming around in different directions. Stay up on the tip of your brush so you don't leave you know, a bunch of thick, heavy lines on here. And again, this is just the first layer, so we don't have to be super exact about where we're going here. We just want to get some some stuff going in here. Ooh, that was a thick one. Let me get some of that. That's super thick. I want to try not and get not get it quite that thick. That's crazy thick. But we'll be covering it up, so I'm not too worried. So just make your loopy loops, your curly curls, your... We can come back in and add, if we need some of the darkness back in, we can come back in and add some of that bitter sweet chocolate in. But for now, we're just creating where we think a loop or, a, you know, a piece of hair will be or, you know, nothing super detailed here. I'm going to put a little bit up here coming from that part. I'm going to help define the side of the head a little bit. And we don't want to cover up every single part of each layer that we put on here. We don't want to cover up the previous layer. Okay, if that makes sense. So I think that's pretty good for our next layer on our hair here. And that was uh, milk. No, that was dark chocolate that we just added. Okay, while that layer of hair dries, let's go ahead and add a quick um, second layer on our straps here with the light buttermilk. I'm 
No hard edges. I'm trying to go around the hair this time. Since I painted it back on, I don't want to cover it up this time. Again, you can paint the straps in before you do the hair. Okay, let's add some more on the hair, and that is going to, our next layer is going to be, uh, I'm going to do milk chocolate. Start adding some little highlights in our hair. And I'm still going to stay with this four round brush. Start up here at the part. And we'll start seeing more of this now. So she'll have like a some highlights in her hair. And we can come back in and add some of our dark color back in. But we're definitely starting with adding more detail here. So I'm just letting the tip of the brush skim across this surface. So I've got uh, um, my paint thinned down a little bit with some water. And just do like we did the first layer and we're going to bring it down to our bun here. this side. Bring some of it this way because the, the hair is just a small amount is going to curl more towards the front and then the rest of it is going to start curling more towards the back. So out to here and then you're going to start a little straight and then work your way going that direction so we can kind of give her a part in her hair. All right then down here we're going to start because this layer will start showing up a little bit more. You want to start defining how her hair goes a little bit more. Send a little bit more down. Just, we're just making a messy bun back here. And it can go any direction that you want it to. Messy buns are very messy, <laughs> so we don't have to. I think I'll come back in and add some more dark hairs. in here. I feel like I'm I need a few more out there. Okay, that 
That looks pretty good for that layer. And again, that was milk chocolate. So you use bittersweet chocolate, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate. And his and her hair looking great. Let me wide angle out because you can see it so much better when we wide angle out and the textures in her hair a little bit better. So I think now is the point when I want to add the flowers in and then we'll come back with our highlights, more highlights and shading in her hair after we get the flowers in. So let's get that pattern transferred on. Okay, so before we finish her hair out and everything that's going there, I want to finish her dress out. So in my instructions, I'll probably have to do the dress before we start the hair. Um, I'll put it first so we can get it done. It's got some really cool details on it. So I am going to um, grab my small round. You can get a detail liner brush, um, whatever kind of brush that will help you make very fine detailed work here. I want to create a wash out here of white. We're going to have some lace coming off of this. So you're going to mix some clean water in with a little bit of white. And sorry about that. That was my motion at my front door. I think my husband was going out to get something out of the mailbox. So we're just going to do some little loops here. And this is just a wash of color. on this one as well. Lots of water, a little bit of paint. I want this to be transparent. This is see-through lace right here. We'll come back and touch up our hair here. And these over here need to be just a little bit darker. color right through here. So this is just a wash of color. You can apply it a couple of times. We're going to create some lace coming off the edge of this dress. So now we're going to take our small round and we're going to start adding some detail to this. Okay, let me zoom you in here. And try and keep you on camera for this. Let me adjust my camera a little bit. That way, hopefully I can keep you on camera. At least for one side. So we're going to create some really cute little lace coming off of this. I'm going to put some little dots on the outside edge. This is just straight snow white. I'm using a small round. I want you to use whatever brush you feel comfortable using. Go all the way out to the edge of the white that you painted. And you want to make sure you don't get your hand in this as you continue to paint on the other side. Okay. Let's do it on this side. We'll, we'll paint back over the hair here, so don't worry about any of that. I'm going to flip mine up this way, I think. It will make it a little bit easier. Little tiny dots here. Don't let them get great big. I'm 
making delicate lace. I hope it will be delicate looking by the time we're done. My paint is not thinned down. I'm using straight paint, but it's fresh paint. You really can't get these dots unless you have fresh paint. Okay, let's add another layer of dots in here. And you can create your lace any pattern that you want. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Dot, dot, dot. Take your time. You do not have to paint as fast as I'm painting, so don't feel like you have to do that. Um, now you can just continue with dots all the way if you would like to, or you can add some teardrop dots or strokes in here. So I start with the one in the middle and I pull. Lay it down and pull. And just create some little layers in there. If your paint isn't flowing off of your brush, if your, your paint's a little bit thick, you can add a little bit of water to it. But how fun is that lace? So fun. One in the middle. Pull. And you'll have room for either two or three on each side. I made my lace over here a little bit bigger than on that side. Okay, a wide angle out. Super cute. Okay, I want to dry brush some white onto my buttermilk here. Down the center of it. I'm really just kind of, the, my brush is wet so it's not, a, you know, a, a dry brush dry brushing. I'm going to go over that hair. I'll just paint it back in. And this is white. That's super pretty. We want to shade on the straps now. I want to shade on the very top of them and maybe a little bit on the outside edge and we'll probably do a little bit of shading around our lace. We want to be careful going around our lace. We're going to use our flesh color and a little bit of pink which was our melon. 
So our flesh mix and a little bit of melon. And I'll put some more honey brown out in case we need some of that. Those were our colors that we used on our shading. For our girl. So I really want to work this into my brush so I can create a nice sheer color here. And then I'm going to go into the V areas. I need a little bit more honey brown and a little bit more pink for melon. Mix that in there. I want to put this, oops, snap my dots, in the V's. this way. I'm going in the V areas. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Get it off my white dots here. Any place you got it on your white dots, just take a damp brush and clean it up or re dot that white dot. Okay, so I want to shade on my straps, but I don't want it to be very dark. So we're going to go with that gray sky, maybe. And I'm going to mix some white in with it. Put some more white out, I used it already. I want it to be the palest of grays, so I'm really mixing some white in with some gray and keeping it pretty light. We'll see how this looks. It's too light, so we need more gray. I don't want it to be super dark. bit more white on these straps. I definitely want more white in there. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a dry brush this time. And load it with some white. And put some white through there. strap definitely needs to be darker at the top. There we go. Now we'll bring our hairs over this with our chocolate, our bittersweet chocolate, and we're ready to start working on the flowers in the hair. So just go ahead and add some of your hairs back over all of this. Send my paint down a little bit. It's too thick coming off my brush. I just lifted that. Stay up on the tip of your brush and you get some nice, pretty little detailed hairs in here. Okay, so that should finish our straps out right there. I just wanted a little bit of lace detail on there to give them a little bit of fun stuff. That looks pretty good. 
So I'm not going to worry about these until I get ready to add some of my more fine detail hairs up here. But the straps I think are done. I like it. I want it to be, I wanted it to be a little bit of a cream colored dress with some lace coming off of it. So I think that uh, turned out pretty well. We might shade a little bit down here. Just a little bit. Doesn't need a whole lot. Just a little dab will do ya. So now let's go up and start base coating in our flowers. Okay, she's looking good. I'm going to wide angle out so you can see her dress straps. Aren't those so cute? I love that little detail on there. All right, let's work on her flowers in her hair. We're going to, I just drew mine on because this is how I create. I'm making my pattern now. For you, you will have the pattern to transfer on. So um, I drew my flowers in with a white pencil, my leaves in with a green, and my berries in with a pink so I would know what is what. So we're going to start with light buttermilk on our flowers. And we're going to base them in two coats of light buttermilk. This flower right here is a great big one in her hair. A little bit of water in my brush. here and you probably don't need to sit and watch me base coat all of this in so I'm gonna go off of camera and finish all of my base coats on here and I'm gonna get two coats of each flowers light buttermilk leaves light avocado berries will be melon and we'll come back and start adding detail to these flowers. All right, I got all my base coats on my flowers and my berries and my leaves. Now we'll be adding more stuff in here after we get these done. Before we finish our flowers, we needed the base coats on first. We're gonna go and finish the rest of her hair, the highlights on it. We'll come back and, and do the shading and then we're going to uh, work on our flowers. Well, we might actually wait and do the shading after we get the flowers on because we're going to have to shade around these flowers a little bit. So I'm going to zoom you in just a little so you can see her hair better. And we are going to add another layer on here and I'm going to add, um, what color am I using? Raw Sienna this time. So I'm going to thin a little bit down with some water. Clean my brush because it was overloaded and dry it off and then load it and let's add some of this color in here. I'm using a smaller round brush now so I can get a little bit more um, fine detail lines here. So I'm using a two round before I had been using a uh, four round. some on this side so we're going to go down the front here and then we're going to start going straight and then working our way back this direction we don't have to go all the way up to the part line we can have a little bit of a separation there more over here and she's getting some very pretty hair I think I need some here I don't want that quite such a drastic color change there a 
Okay, let's go down here to this area because I really like how the upper part of her hair looks. I'm very happy with it. So we're going to add some of this color down here. We'll have one more layer to go on our hair here. And then it'll be ready to add some shading. Okay, that looks pretty good. And that color again was raw sienna. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm gonna add a little bit of color onto this one, make it not quite so dark. She's looking good. So we're going to add one more layer on here. I'm going to add a little bit of honey brown for our brightest little highlights on her hair. Okay, let's add some honey brown on here. Now we're going to add even less of this color. Again, you want to thin it down and this will definitely give us some very bright highlights. And you can, I'm continuing with this one round, but you can certainly go to a smaller brush. And I'm going to move around her hair a little bit more. Remember with each layer we do less and less. You do not want to cover up every single layer that is in her hair extremely important. I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm going to do a hit and miss along here so I don't fill it in. Okay. thin them down, whichever works. Come back and tickle a thinner one in there. I need more water in my brush because I'm putting too much pressure to get to my strokes. Okay, let's go down here to the bottom some bright highlights on here. These will be some of the hairs that are closer to the top, sticking out a little bit more.
So we've kind of kept it darker next to the flowers, which is good because that's where we will have a little bit more of our shading. So that's good that we left that darker through there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So that's the last layer that we're going to put on the hair. At the end, I'll come back and see if I want to add a few more bright little highlights in there. We might do that with some buttermilk. But for now, that's uh, where I'm going with the hair. So I think it looks pretty good. It just needs its shading around the flowers. And up here, we've kind of already developed a little bit of shading. And down here, we'll have to add some. So I am going to wait on the shading until after we get all of these flowers painted in. I'll shade around these flowers and then we'll come and add our little filler stuff back in here. Okay, let's start on her flowers. So we're going to begin uh, shading them with some melon. And we'll begin. I went ahead and drew my pencil lines in here for you, but um, you don't necessarily have to do that. You want to try not to get them too dark. I've got mine pretty dark for you, so I will try and keep paint off of them so that I can erase them. May not happen, but I'm going to work at it and try to get that done. So I'm just putting a little bit of melon. Um, here at the centers and base of the petals and I will do all of my flowers. I'll come back and add some white on the top and darken the centers with some razzleberry here in a minute. But all of our flowers will get um, this color. Now this leaf is turned over so I'm going to put some color down here. These are all flip, uh, the other petals. And you can see I'm almost completely filling the petals. And there's a little piece of one peeking down there. And we have this one here. And this one. And I'm using a pretty large angle brush here, a uh, half inch, but you can use whatever size brush that you like to use. Um, I don't normally use angle brushes, but uh, I started using this one on a, another project and I really like how it worked. So I've been using it a lot more lately. Again, this is another flipped up petal here. So you're going to do the bases of all of your petals, pulling it up, almost filling the petal with this color, but not quite filling the petal. Okay, see I didn't fill it completely. I can still see some of that light buttermilk. Um, so now I can really tell where my petals are. I'm going to try and go in and erase the graphite lines. Hopefully I didn't paint over all of them. Any that I painted, got paint on, I'll have to try and cover up with more paint because once you put paint on a graphite line, it does not come off. Erase some of these out here. And we'll just get it all cleaned up. Alright, brush that away from your paint. We don't want to get that in your paint, so that looks much better. So we've got our first layer on our flowers, and they're already looking fabulous. Okay, we're going to deepen our color with some Razzleberry. So make a nice sheer float of this color. Work it in your brush with some water, and that makes it nice and sheer. And we're going to put this color on next. We may do this color a couple times. I haven't decided yet. 
I know they still look pretty messy, but they will be spectacular when we're done. You don't have to fill it as far as you went with the melon color. So you can still keep a little bit of that melon shining through. And don't forget this little piece. Be afraid to touch back with your finger if you get a little bit too heavy-handed with your paint. Our fingers are a fabulous painting tool, so don't be afraid to use them. Okay, so there is our Razzleberry. Aren't these looking beautiful? Oh my gosh, I'm loving the color of these. I think they are gorgeous. Okay, I think what I'm going to do now is uh, this one's going to have a center in it. The rest of them we're not really going to see the centers. We're just going to darken where we think you know a center might be peeking out. This one we're just going to tap some center in. So let me get a little scruffy brush here. I don't want anything ginormous, but something that's pretty textury where we can tap some color in here. We're going to use our bittersweet chocolate because I did not use black in this project. So we're going to tap. I'm using a dry, stiff brush. And I'm going to load it up and tap a little bit, a little bit off. I just want a little bit on here to, to start defining where I want my center to be on my flower. And then I can come back in and build that out. And it will take a couple of layers to get that, you know, pretty opaque. So I'll let this layer dry. I'm just going to wipe my brush out so that I can use it here in a little bit. To, um, tap some more in there. So I want to take some of my Razzleberry and a little bit of my bittersweet chocolate and make this dark red here. And we're going to darken a little bit down in these where we think the center is going to peek out a little bit. Just give it a little bit of darkness. Like this one will have some center coming out right here. This is our Razzleberry and a little bit of bittersweet chocolate. This one here. And we'll tuck a little bit down in here, like maybe the center of this one is showing us something. Oops. Pinked on the wrong side. Wash out and reload here. Okay, and I want to pull a little bit of this up into my petals. So this is that mix of mostly Razzleberry with a little bit of um, bittersweet chocolate. I'll just add some veining things coming up. I 
definitely want it to be more um, of the red than the than the bittersweet chocolate. Okay. Let's see if that's dry. Still a little bit wet. Okay, so I want to darken where one of these um, is behind the other one, and I'm just going to do that with some Razzleberry. I don't want to um, make my flowers turn black, so I'm going to start separating my petals better now. Giving them a little bit more shape and definition here. And when we add our highlight that will give it the final shape that it needs. Okay, Razzleberry. Alright, so we're going to shade there and here. And let's see, that one looks like it's on top of that one. And this one looks like it's on top. So we want to bring those petals more forward. We'll put a little bit of this around our center. We're going to tap some more in there in a minute. And we'll move on to these other ones. Separate them all with this Razzleberry. Nice sheer color of this. And I can't tell which one's on top, so when we highlight, we'll have to determine that a little bit better. Now we can see more which ones are on top. Okay, so while we have this Razzleberry, let's go ahead on our berries and shade on our berries with Razzleberry. Definitely be repeating this. Okay, so that's a good start on our berries. So let me retap the center. This nice and dark. I think that'll be pretty good. Clean this brush now. And I'm going to get my detail liner and then some of our bittersweet. And pull some. Maybe not. I don't get my paint to flow at all. To keep adding water till it gets to that flowy consistency. 
And we're going to pull up some stamens out of here. And I'm going to go pick up a little bit of my milk chocolate and add some highlights in here. And that flower. And then I'll take a little bit of the milk chocolate and just dot some or not milk chocolate this is bittersweet and now I'll switch over to my milk chocolate and put some dots in here I'll get the water out of my brush that was full of water and we'll dot some in here to look like it's hitting some of the lower stamens Okay, that's looking really cute. Okay, let's begin highlighting on these flowers with some Snow White. Now we're going to go around our outer edges and define our shapes much better. Get our petals nice and pull a little bit of that in. the petal. And then we can really see where we need to come back in and add a little bit more shading. We'll probably have to do this highlighting a couple of times to get it. In the oh, I'm painting way too far on my brush there. And then I picked up pink. We don't want no pink. one just straight white This is going to show us where we need to put our shading to really separate and define. They are looking good. Straight white. I'm not thinning it down. I'm pretty much using straight white, but you, you will need a little bit of water in your brush in order to float, so... Make sure your brush has a little bit of moisture in it.
These flowers are such a focal point here. We want to make sure that they look really nice. So take your time. And make them look nice. Alright, so we can really see where we definitely need to shade. So I'm going to take my Razzleberry and shade again and really separate and define all these areas now. So that petal is on top so I'm going to shade a little bit here. sure which one's on top there. And I'm just going back with Razzleberry because I don't want super dark color. So Razzleberry is a little bit more transparent so we can get some nice shading here. So this one will have some shading here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of this in the center, darken up our center here. Ooh, too far over on my brush. find that edge a little bit more. Let me get some fresh razzleberry out here. right there is mostly going to be dark. So I need I see a couple places I need to come back and brighten and redefine with the highlight. redefine with some white here. You definitely want to be able to tell which petal is on top. So Be sure and do that, and if you need to brighten the highlight on any of them, this is the time you're going to do that. there. Do 
don't take your shading all the or your highlight all the way into your shading so stop just short of it and that will give you that highlight edge that you're looking for I think that looks pretty good bit of this white off of the corner here for some little highlights. You can grab your detail brush, but um, I've got the paint on my brush here, so I'm just going to add some. Or a lot. That was quite a big little spot there. because wide angling out gets a better perspective and you can see it a little bit more. So we're ready to add some leaves um, in here. Since we started on our berries, we might go ahead and finish our berries. Okay, we've already shaded once with the Razzleberry. So let's go in and shade a second time. I'm using a tin chisel brush. You use whatever brush works best for you. Try to stay off your flowers so you don't have to go touch them up. on my background. Okay, let's highlight with some... Let me try some buttermilk. See if it's going to be too bright. Mm, I don't like that. It's going to look too much like my flowers, so we're going to have to darken that. We're going to have to darken those berries. So we are going to add some bittersweet chocolate to our Razzleberry. Bittersweet chocolate. Razzleberry, get this nice dark red, and we will float them with this color. That was not a very good float. Razzleberry. white if you want. Which I almost made mine white. I am not going to paint them in again. So if you want to make yours white, you go right ahead.
Okay, darken if you need to. I feel like a couple of these need to be a little darker. Okay, I'm going to highlight on them with a mix of, I'm going to do melon and some white. I'll get some fresh melon out here. And I'm just going to do an equal mix, so I'm going to dip once into each one and mix it. Way too much water. more white than melon. If you need to add more melon to the mix, go right ahead. Vice versa, if you need more white, then go right ahead and add some more white. And then I'll put just a little dot of just straight white on there, I think. Okay, we're ready to work on our leaves now, and then we'll add some filler stuff in here. Okay, leaves aren't very big, so hopefully they won't take us very long. We can shade around this and then add a few little filler things in there. So we're going to shade with um, evergreen on all of our leaves at their bases. We're going to keep the leaves fairly simple. This is turning out so cute. Take your time so you don't get any green paint on your flowers. Okay, that's a nice uh, float of, what did I use? I used, oh, grief, I already forgot, evergreen. Evergreen on our leaves here. We're going to darken up that shading. We're going to add a little bit of um, bittersweet chocolate to it to make it like a dirty green. And we'll do this again.
all the way around here. Okay, those look pretty good. We're gonna add a highlight with some olive green. It's my favorite green for highlighting on leaves with. And this will look very bright when we first put it on here, but it will fade down and be perfect. on the leaves. See how those have already started to fade down in there so I'll probably do it a couple of times. So pretty. Definitely needs more. Okay, I'm going to go back and just apply a second coat on to some of them. under here so I can stop her from spinning so we can wine angle out and see all of her. She's looking really good. So we're going to add some filler stuff but before we do that we want to shade around this hair, this flowers in the hair so we can kind of bring it forward and push the hair back. All right we're going to do bittersweet chocolate. So I'm going to get a float of that. Work it into my brush because I don't want it to go super crazy here. And we're just going to go around all of this stuff. And bring it more forward. I'm using a pretty sheer color of this. Mm 
And we're getting some nice shading here. Pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, you can also, while you have this color on your uh, brush, shade to push some of this hair back. So, like Right here, I might want to bring this part of the hair more forward, so I'm going to shade a little bit down through here so that this part pops out, that part pops out. This is where you can determine, you know, what's on top and what's not. This gives your hair a lot more depth as well. fun way to do the hair. Okay, so we've kind of brought forward what we want to bring forward. I think it looks great. You can go up here if you need to and put a little bit at the part. But if you kind of kept the paint from being there, you should not really need to do that. So the hair is done unless we come back and add a few more highlights in it. Um, I'll wait till I get all the flower stuff done and then we'll decide. So now I need to decide what kind of filler flowers I want to put in here. Okay, I've decided what I want to do with some filler flowers here. I want to add some of this blue that's in the background in. And I'm not going to use the media paints. I'm going to use the turquoise blue since that would be probably what you would have on hand. So I'm going to take my um, olive green and my blue and kind of mix it together make this green blue stuff and I'm just going to start tapping this in create some nice filler stuff coming out olive green, turquoise blue it's pretty close to an equal mix. Might be slightly more olive green than the blue. And we're going to add some in here. We're going to come back and tap some uh, of the turquoise on here. Right now we're just doing the green. Kind of drew them in here kind of big, but they don't need to be that big. This is just some filler stuff. So just basically draw your line where they're going to go, and then just start at the tip and tap and bring some out. And 
And these will all go in after you get your flowers done. So my line drawing will have the flowers. The filler stuff is pretty basic. You just draw a line where you want it to go. I'll have the lines on the line drawing, but you won't be adding these when you first add your flower line drawings. Thin a little bit more down. See, I've got one more little one here. So you can kind of add them in wherever you want to add them. So now I'm going to wash my brush off. We're going to come back with some turquoise and maybe a turquoise white mix, I think. I'm going to take my turquoise and white. Maybe a little more turquoise than white because we can always come back and tap some, some white onto the top here. And then we'll come back and and I'm not going to go all the way down to the base. I want to keep this more at the top of these. We'll come back and tap a little white on them because I think they'll need that white to brighten them. So you can see I'm not going all the way down to the base. I'm leaving the green ones down there at the bottom. So you're just going to tap this about two-thirds of the way down your stem So that was about two-thirds of the way down the stems. And now I think we'll do a little bit of white at the tips of them to brighten them up. So just some straight white. And add some at the very tips. And we'll let this dry and we'll come back and erase our graphite lines. We're just doing a few dots at the top of these. We're not doing the whole thing, so don't... Uh... Don't get carried away with that white. Okay, let the white angle out. Lock her in place here. She looks really good. I think her flowers look great. And, you know, any flowers that you don't like, you obviously can put a filler flower in. So I feel like I need an extra flower in here. Like right through, an extra filler one right through there. Um, you know, and that's definitely a personal preference. It might be something on there that you just absolutely do not like. So it's like we're putting, we're putting a filler flower in there. And that's one thing that filler flowers are really good for, is covering up something that you may not like. And then a few little white 
buttons on there. Okay, so now I just need to erase my graphite lines on the ones that are dry. That one's obviously not dry because I just painted it in. I didn't put a graphite line on that one. I just drew it in, I think. Or painted it in. Just stay off of that one because it's still wet. Okay, let me move some of this stuff that I have here so we can lay her down flat on the table here. Take a look at her laying flat. I think that always helps. And then you can determine if she needs anything else. So if you want her to have even more highlights in her hair, you can come back and add a little bit of maybe... Um, you could maybe use a little bit of light buttermilk, but that's really going to add some bright, bright highlights on there. And I don't think you'll be too awful happy with it. So I think she looks really good. I have titled this one The Maid of Honor. I've done another one that is The Bridesmaid. I'm doing three in a series. And so the next one will be The Bride. So this one is The Bridesmaid and I hope that, no, this is The Maid of Honor. I've already done The Bridesmaid. So I hope that you have enjoyed painting this with me. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed creating her. And uh, I hope you'll uh, be ready for the next one, The Bride, when I get her done. And uh, her hair is going to be even different than this one. So that will be exciting. Um, thank you so much for painting with me, everybody. I appreciate every one of you. Please subscribe, like, and share, comment. Any questions that you have whatsoever, I am so happy to answer. So Okay, after I completed the video, I came back to this project a couple of days later and I didn't quite like how the flowers were looking. So all I did was take my pencil and I drew some lines on my petals to create some folds and give the flower more movement. And you can do this however you want. It can go all the way across like this. It can just be a little piece of a fold here and there. And I did it to some of the smaller uh, leaves as well, petals as well, to bring movement out throughout the whole bouquet in her hair. And then I just shaded uh, underneath them with some of the uh, Razzle Berry and then brightened with some white just on that uh, part that's folded. And um, I also added more white dots in the center of this and um, right where everything, where all of these little clusters of flowers go behind the uh, flowers here. I shaded that with a little bit of evergreen so that I could push those back into back behind the flower itself and uh, I think that's about the only thing that I did you can always go back in and brighten your berries with another layer of razzleberry you can always go in and um, brighten the tips of your greens with another layer of olive green whatever um, looks good to you you can't go wrong there but the flowers definitely needed to have more movement they were just so flat and uh, I didn't like the flat so I just went throughout all of them even this little one here I probably could have came back in and and done a little uh, fold on uh, a couple of those petals on this small one that's back here that we can see four petals of I didn't do that one, but um, as I'm looking at it now, I kind of wish I had. But I like the main flower right here has 
much more movement and I did try and put a little bit more white into the petal because when we came and added the fold that put more pink on the flower and so we needed to have a little bit brighter area so I wanted to quickly give you that here at the end of this video because um, I just think it improves the painting so much more so hopefully that wasn't confusing for you just draw a curved line shade under it with some razzleberry and highlight on top of it with some white and you are good to go a little bit of shading to push these back behind with some evergreen okay everybody uh thanks so much i'll see you on the next one